Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this, the very first of our uh, Next Gen Planners morning commute shows. And it's great to see so many people have uh, got up and joined us this morning. Um, anybody who doesn't know, I'm Adam Owen, and I'm joined today by Phil Bray and uh, Dan Graham, who are going to be on our regular presenting team, and also Will Robbins from New Model Advisor. Um, Hello. We've also got Chris Budd today um, and every day, and Chris is going to uh, give us a well-being thought for the day each morning. Morning, Chris. Morning. <laughs> so um, in terms of why we're, or sort of what we're doing today, I thought I'd cover a little couple of bits of housekeeping. Um, at the moment, I've put everybody on mute. Uh, Dan is here monitoring the chat box. So please, everybody do drop in and um, say hi on the chat. And uh, today, we're really interested in hearing from you for a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, what things are you doing to create routine now that everybody's working from home? So how are you finding it? And what things have you found to be really useful and helpful? And also, what have you seen on social media over the last couple of days that you really liked? Let's hear some good news as well. So uh, pop some stuff through in the chat box there also. And how are you doing today, Phil? What's been happening in your world? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I've uh, not left the house for two days, um, and like most people, uh, but life is pretty, pretty damn good. I'm looking outside. It's sunny. I can see rabbits. I can see little birds in the trees. It's not bad at all, really. See, this is the type of content people want, Phil. You looking out the window and telling us that there are rabbits. That's excellent. They're in a hutch. It's not as if I'm in some sort of field or something like that. They're in a bloody hutch in front of me. Um, but you never know. If I don't go out to the shops, they might fulfill a different function in life. I think for tomorrow's show, we definitely need to see some rabbit pictures, don't we, Phil? That would be a thing. Or maybe even um, you know, do an outside broadcast next to the hutch. That'd be a good show, wouldn't it? I might give that a go. I might give that a go. But I think in the meantime, Adam, we need to understand why you've done this. Um, oh, that's, good. that's a good question, isn't it? Why have I done this? Um, I'll, I'll tell you what I've done this, Phil. Saturday morning, um, I was wandering around relatively aimlessly, as I often do on a Saturday morning, um, because obviously everything is normally a weekend then. And I was sort of thinking about um, when I first started working from home. So I started working from home um, back in the mid-1990s. I'd spent four and a half years as a retail manager in Sainsbury's. And um, I'd spent all my time providing the people with Manchester with yoghurt um, and decided that that probably wasn't going to be my final calling in life. So um, all of that structure and long hours and everything else that I was doing, um, I'd suddenly switched. I became a financial planner, um, self-employed financial planner, um, working from a back bedroom at home. And I'd had you know, six o'clock starts, 12, day, 12 hour days for four and a half years. And all of a sudden I was a bit demob happy. And the one thing that I, I didn't have was structure. And this was at a time when daytime TV was really just taking off. So um, there were lots of DIY daytime TV programs. So I'd wake up whenever I needed to, Andrea would go off to work and then I would, um, yeah, I'd sort of think about doing a bit of work, but then I'd get distracted and then changing rooms would come on or whatever the DIY program was and I'd watch that and then it'd be lunchtime, so I'd have to have some lunch. I'd watch working lunch because, of course, there was a BBC program then at lunchtime. That was a, a thing that was work-related, so that sort of justified some things and the day would go on. But what it meant was that I was working really late every day. I didn't really have any structure. And things came to a head one afternoon, well, one, one sort of mid-morning it was in actual fact, um, where I was watching a DIY programme and they decided that it would be a great idea to pine panel a bathroom. And I thought, I can do that. I can pine panel a bathroom. So I took myself off to B&Q and um, I filled the car with pine panelling and um, I got home and without any real planning or forethought, I um, took a chisel and took all of the bathroom tiles off the bathroom. And um, then I started randomly throwing up pine panelling um, to hide the enormous gaping holes I created because of course I had no concept that I'd probably need to plasterboard and plaster the tiles behind me. Um, Andrea came home around, around about half five. And these days, now, later on, we, we learned to call it the comedy bathroom incident. At the time, she wasn't quite that kind. And, and what that did, it sort of gave me the, the realization, it was one of those realization moments that um, we would ultimately, um, or I needed to find some level of certainty and also routine. And, and you know, I'm hoping that for everybody who is um, at home now lacking that routine, 
that actually um, you will maybe, just maybe, um, find a little bit of routine from these 8.30 sessions. So it's really to prevent all of those pine panel bathroom moments in your lives. That's really why I thought we could do this. And um, hopefully um, it will bring a little bit of light relief to uh, everything else that's going on as well. Good answer, Adam. Wasn't exactly sure where you were going with that, but yeah, entertain <laughs> us all for a few minutes. Um, and also here to entertain us now, next, is Will with today's news. Hello, newsflash. Um, so what's going on today? Uh, I think um, just to, our top stories, uh, they're going out on the NMA alert any time now. Uh, will be uh, on uh, the uh, FCA delaying, uh, I think, the, its decision on DB transfer um, contingent charging. Uh, obviously, it's been a big issue for us uh, over the last uh, few months, uh, year, more than a year, really. Um, it's just a small change, but it's one of those things that you spot in the small print. So I think it was due for Q1, which is about March, end of March. That's obviously not going to happen. It's now saying Q2, Q3, uh, which is a sensible decision. Uh, but it hasn't really made much fanfare about this. Uh, but it was just just one of those things. So it could be until could be waiting till the end of September for a change on that. Obviously, you know, this, people have got Pat, might feel like they've got bigger fish to fry than that right now. But obviously, any announcement like that would, would of course use disruption uh, to firms that are already struggling. Um, the other sort of big story, or sort of really bigger story than that, uh, is around uh, CapAd. So this has obviously become a big issue. Uh, for advisors uh, over the last couple of weeks, wondering what's going to happen there. Um, I think we've got two things here. We've obviously spoken to uh, people like the Personal Finance Society, who've actually uh, said, uh, well, I'll tell you what they said in a minute, actually, but we've, we've, said, we've, had, we've spoken to the FCA, uh, and they've said the uh, CAPAD app rules are on their radar. Now, uh, the reason it's interesting is because of the, quite a few advisors who I've spoken to have been saying, well, actually, it would be brilliant if we could just, you know, it's this extraordinary situation if we could sort of quote unquote dip into our cap ad or they relax the rules somehow. So, and forget, please forgive me if I'm wrong, but perhaps where we do some, some borrowing, it won't uh, affect uh, our cap ad situation. Um, but uh, so the FCA may be looking at this, maybe looking at some sort of relaxation, but uh, speaking to the PFS, um, they're actually sort of trying to resist that and, and caution firms against and caution regulator against any relaxation uh, as it uh, the rules are there for a purpose and it may leave uh, businesses in a worse state, other stakeholders in a worse state afterwards where they to find themselves in, in, to, in uh, financial difficulties. Um, so those are two, uh, two of the main stories today. I think uh, potentially also there's some, uh, we're looking forward to what the Chancellor's going to say again today. We've had a few big announcements, obviously, over the last few weeks, and uh, the one that we're all looking forward to hearing uh, hearing about is obviously uh, what's going to happen to the self-employed. So, uh, yeah, I, I haven't, we haven't got any <laughs> information on that right now in terms of what's going to say. I haven't got an exclusive, I'm, a world exclusive, I'm afraid. But uh, the understanding is that it will seek to be uh, or seek parity, I think is the word, uh, with what is being given to the uh, to, to employees, uh, which as we know is is that uh, uh, eighty percent that you know to 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 fill eighty percent of their their income up to about two and a half thousand pounds. It's going to be a lot more complicated with with the self-employed. Uh, although I think some people have already put forward suggestions, uh, perhaps using the tax return as a way of calculating uh, the, the you know what what a person earns and what you know basically doing the calculations uh that could be an interesting way of doing it um uh but yeah it have to be some sort sort of scheme and calculation it's going to be a lot more complicated uh, so thank you will and um in terms of that then i think um the, there was quite a lot in the press a couple of days ago about that um was that sort of leaked or briefed from parliament previously the self-employed stuff or had that just sort of gone around the rumor mill do you think uh, yeah, there were a few stories earlier in the week, and I think a few P publications slightly jumped the gun uh, in terms of what whether there was an announcement imminent. Uh, but it's like it's there's a likelihood that it will, you know, it's going to have to reflect to some you have to reflect some degree what's been given to employees uh, in in terms of outcome. 
it's it's how they achieve that that's the difficult bit so you know and all, I guess it is a, it's one of those things where it's a little bit of a truism. The government's going to do something for the self-employed. I think it's under enormous pressure to, to do that. So, I mean, that was the sort of not news there, but no one's really been able, no one knows what the mechanism is yet. And that sort of strikes me as likely that the government are taking, they, they don't know or won't know until re really very close to announcing it. Excellent. Thank you very much. And um, will it be yourself every day on the news desk or are you going to rotate um, from the gang at New Model Advisor? Yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll rotate. Uh, we'll, we'll revolve. Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously, uh, with all the whole New Model Advisor team has been working incredibly hard uh, from, from their homes uh, over the last week or so. Uh, Jack Bill Gilbert, our news editor, I'm sure, uh, is we're desperate to make make it into the airwaves uh, no, no, a lot of the, the next gen crowd uh, will know him from from the various events he's gone to he did a podcast uh, at an event last year I, I believe and met a lot of you uh, but yeah uh, the whole the whole gang uh, all the, the reporters as well uh, will eventually get uh, get get that get there going uh, and you'll get to hear James Fitzgerald's uh, Australian tones as well hopefully soon <laughs> Great stuff. Excellent. Thank you. And um, it's worth mentioning at this point as well that we um, we have a number of features, um, regular features um, on a weekly basis are going to come along later on in April. Um, so, Will, you're going to run a gardening feature for us, aren't you? We've got, uh, we've got gardening yeah. from, from Will's back garden. Um, we're going to do some arts and crafts and maybe also a gaming feature as well. So we wanted to hear from anybody who's got interest in either gardening, arts and crafts or gaming. Um, come along and uh, join the conversation. And it looks like, oh, there we go. Chris Budd has just reached for the guitar. Um, so I think we'll maybe do a musical segment as well. And along the way, we also have a regular weekly slot from Steve Martin. Um, some of you will be able to see Steve there. Um, and I think, Steve, I'm assuming you're on an exercise bike right now. Yeah, excellent, good stuff. So Steve is going to do a regular Friday slot um, looking at how we keep fit whilst we're all in lockdown as well. So um, loads more things additionally to that coming along the way. So Phil, what's up now? Next, we have somebody that I'm proud to call a friend. Um, somebody who's got great ideas and terrible shirts. Um, and he's going to do a, uh, oh, I think this is a daily segment, uh, Thought for the Day. So over to Chris Budd from his shed. I think uh, we should have a rule that uh, we should have a competition. Who's got the loudest shirt, personally? And um, I'm a bit disappointed in the Dow and as I see around. But come on, guys, let's make an effort. So I've got two minutes to do this. So I'm going to make it a challenge of mine every day to get this tip in two minutes. So here we go. Uh, there are five areas of well-being. If you want something to read while you're all locked up, that's uh, the book that started me off on the whole well-being journey. It's a uh, written by two journalists, uh, sorry, researchers from Gallup, and they go through all the Gallup research about well-being, come up with a conclusion of what is well-being, and they conclude that there are five areas of well-being. Community, career, physical, social, and financial. And of those, easily the most important is social well-being, not financial, social well-being. And uh, this, uh, there's a Harvard study, which I quote quite often. You can have a look at the TED talk. You can just type in Harvard study on happiness. Um, it's about 12 minutes long. It's absolutely brilliant. But basically, I'll kind of spoil it for you. The, the net result is that they conclude the, the biggest contributor by a, a, a street is social well-being to our overall well-being. So given that all of your clients, all of our clients are currently in lockdown, um, my uh, very, very simple tip is pick the phone up, don't send an email. This has been a BMI bonnet in, uh, in Ovation for quite a few years, as Tom Morris will, will uh, testify to. Um, if you're, every time you send an email, especially if it's to a client, think to yourself, have I got an excuse to pick the phone up here rather than send an email? Maybe even book in a video call because you've got a whole lot of people that are bored out of their minds sitting at home and they would love to speak to somebody. And when you do speak to them, don't say, let's talk about your investments, but just ask a question. How's your day going? What are you doing at the moment? Be sociable. These are opportunities to touch points to um, build relationships with people. And that, those relationships will be around well-being, and that will end up with happier clients than you would have had at the beginning. So that's my, my day's uh, financial well-being tip. Thank you, Chris. And uh, what have we got to look forward to tomorrow? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a whole 24 hours. So thanks very much. And Chris will be here every day. So if uh, anybody's got any suggestions for a financial well-being thought for the day, then uh, please do ping them along. And in actual fact, Chris, you're our interview guest tomorrow as well. 
And, and that's what we're going to do now, in actual fact, that we have a, a daily interview segment, a slightly longer form interview. Um, and this is our pilot episode, so we wanted to keep it relatively simple today. We've got some great guests coming up next week. Uh, Steve Martin's going to do a long form interview for us. We've got Rory Percival, uh, Caroline Stewart. We've got um, a number of other key people from around the profession next week, including um, Keith Richards, the um, CEO of the PFS. So uh, please send in some questions ahead of time for Keith. Um, but you know each week we'll be adding more and more guests and some of our audience today might also want to come along as guests so please do put your name forward we're really keen to hear from everybody but today's guest um, keeping it nice and simple is Phil Bray hello Phil hi Adam how you doing so um, Phil we've got some questions for you lined up already but again um, if anybody in the audience wants to ping a question through to Phil obviously Phil you know, from uh, everybody I think will know you from the work that you do at the Yardstick Agency and um, you know, particularly helping firms with marketing understanding marketing uh, at this time but you were saying before that you are you know and all of your team are working from home how have you found the transition over the last week or so? Me it's been bloody hard um, I hate working from home um, I really like the routine of, of going into the office and walking around the coffee shop at the same time in the morning, walking in, they know what I'm going to order, I walk out with the same thing every day. I just really like that routine. I've just completely lost it um, right now. Um, the routine, not it. Um, and it's, just been, it's been really, really difficult. Um, the team of, um, we sent the team home last Tuesday um, and they've got into it really, really well. Um, we're using Slack a lot. We're actually picking the phone up and talking to each other. Yeah, I find it. I find it difficult. And have you found anything within that whole process that you've been able to cling on to that has that has helped with the self isolation and and just those moments of being able to connect to the team? I suppose the best thing I did yesterday was I went for a walk. Um, I wouldn't normally go for a walk during the working day, um, but I got some calls to make, so I just took a, a walk around the park, um, and that was fantastic. Useful, just getting outside. Um, and, and walking around the block, walking around the park. It was, it was really nice, even though I was working and there was only a few calls, it was just nice to be out in the sunshine, feel a bit of warmth on your back. Um, and as long as they keep allowing us to do that, then I think that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I um, had a moment of panic the other day at the, um, when I was watching Boris Johnson's press conference when he actually said that we had to do a, day, a, a, a piece of exercise a day. And I hadn't realised that that was a, a maximum rather than a minimum. So I relaxed a little after that. that it's good. a voluntary thing, mate. It's a voluntary thing. Yeah, I was really pleased with that. Um, so in terms of um, well-being then, you've been for a walk. Um, what are the rest of your team doing to just maintain that? So we really encourage it. I say everyone's been at home since last Tuesday. Uh, we all saw Boris's announcement last Monday. They all seem to merge into one, don't they? Um, and we had a, a team meeting last Tuesday and just said, look, everyone, you need to you need to go and work from home. So literally they did that that morning. And then there was a few of us left in the office. Um, and we've, we've encouraged them to, to communicate with each other, Slack, Zoom, but also to um, respect each other's time as well. Because just because somebody is at home doesn't necessarily mean they're available to be, to be badgered with, with questions. So really encourage people to, to communicate, but also respect time. And we've done a few um, little social things. Um, so there's been, there was a quiz last, um, last uh, Friday. Um, every Friday afternoon, our, one of our copywriters, a chap called Nick, does Nick's Bangers, which are just terrible tunes from the 80s and 90s. So we've still been playing those. Um, and on a more serious note, the other thing I'm going to organise for the team is uh, the ability to check in with a psychologist or counsellor if they want. So they'll be able to check in, have an hour online with them, and then we'll just pick up the bill um, after at, at the end of each at the end of each month for any sessions which have been booked, um, just to try and look after their their well-being. Clearly, it's voluntary. Clearly, it's anonymous, but just to try and help the team's mental well-being during the next whatever it is, few weeks and few months. I thought that was a, a nice thing to do. Um, and an important thing that, we, thing that we do. But who knows where we'll end up? We're only a week in, aren't we? A week and a couple of days. Um, and it'll be fascinating to see where we, where we end up over the next few weeks. I think one thing that we'll do, Phil, is we'll take some time lapse from, um, from these sessions on a daily basis, just of you. And, um, and we can play that over the whole three month period at the, at the end, if it is three months, if it's maybe longer, who knows. But at the end of the isolation period, we'll play a Phil Bray time lapse um, just to see how, where we do all end I'm up. Gonna need Alice, I'm going to need an Alice band and all sorts. <laughs> 
Um, Dan, have we had anything through on the chat that uh, we wanted to ask Phil? Uh, no questions as of yet. Just a lot of chat um, about the, the fact that there's three Rohans in here. Um, Rohan's just mentioned a next-gen quiz, which everyone seems to be up for. Uh, Rich Ellis mentions that Joe Wicks is on in 12 minutes, so we have to hurry up. Um, and a lot of people are watching Gretchen eat breakfast as well, which is a bit freaky, but never mind. Um, I've actually got a question for Phil. Um, personally, it's not a personal one, it's about the firm. Um, but it's about finding the right balance. Um, so we don't want to overwhelm clients and we don't want to panic them too much but we also don't want to kind of go absent on them. We don't want them to have to come to us first. So what would you recommend as a balance for communicating with clients at this point? Well, I think there's three things clients need. Reassurance, confidence, and information. Um, and I would keep them separate. So some will want, let's talk about information first of all. So some will want information about their, how market volatility has affected them. Um, and their investments. Some will want information, uh, the business owners, for example, will want information around what's, what's available from the government, what help is available uh, to, to them. So I would be communicating those, those periodically. Um, if there's a big announcement, as there was last Friday night, um, on the 80% pay for furloughed workers, I will be communicating that at the time to the right people in your client base. Um, if there's no point sending a I'm with Chris on this. There's no point sending a blanket email out to everybody, including people who um, mm. who might not be affected by the, in that case, the 80% furlough. So I would communicate in a timely way and um, to people who who the information is relevant relevant to. Um, I've seen I've seen on the back of that, I've seen a couple of ways of doing it. I think sending emails out every time we see significant rises or significant falls is fairly pointless. Um, and I also think we're probably at a point where I'm writing about it for blog tomorrow. I think we're at a point where probably clients are fairly on an even keel now. Um, we've had three weeks of this, um, of market, market volatility. Um, and so probably clients are on a fairly even keel right now. I suspect the caveat to that and the exception to that is I suspect a second wave of clients may come to you who are a little bit worried, who over the past few weeks have been spending a lot of time um, in crisis mode, so saving their business, dealing with getting people to work remotely. And that would apply to business owners and senior executives and managers. So they might have not been to you to talk about how their, their investments, their pensions are doing and, and the effects of the volatility. So I suspect that might be a second wave of people to come along in two or three weeks time. But I would keep communications as personal as you can. I'm with Chris, pick up the phone. Um, nothing beats picking up the phone. And I would also make sure they are to clients, prospects, and professional connections. Everyone's been communicating with clients, or everyone I've been talking to has been communicating with clients. But it's so important to communicate with prospects and professional connections as well. Prospects are going to be really hurting right now because they haven't had the benefit of their financial, financial planners' knowledge and wisdom over all these years and the coaching over all these years. They're potentially hurting even more. So pick up the phone to clients, pick up the phone to prospects as well. I spoke to a planner yesterday who picked up the phone to a prospect and has just won a, a sizable investment. Um, so a bit of a rambling answer, but hopefully there's something in there you can pull out. Thanks for that, Phil. And I noticed that um, Gary Hale has also sort of echoed what you've said there, um, in as much that he's found that um, clients are different. Recent investors are more concerned than long-standing investors. So that, I think, absolutely echoes what you've said, doesn't it? Um, Chris Budds asked, can you give some tips for people for writing interesting content that people will want to read? Um, so what we're seeing at the moment is, so yeah, I mean, be succinct. We quite often get asked, how long should a blog be? And the answer is, well, as long as it needs to be. Um, there's no set, I mean, there's no set limit. Um, say what you need to say in as few words as you need to say them. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. Second, um, be relevant, be interesting. And if you can raise a smile on somebody's face, that's always a good thing as well. These, aren't, these are difficult times. So if you can put a smile on somebody's face, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, what else would I say? Make it, say? make it relevant. Make sure you, if you can, segment your client bank. So what you're sending out goes out to the right people at the right, right time. And one of the things we're seeing is that these communications, they are being read. 
Uh, we've done some analysis on the open rates on the communications that we've been producing for our um, our content team. And our content team, they're, they're doing a great job right now. They all had full heads of hair. They've been pulling them out. They look like you know, Adam. Um, they've been so busy. Um, and what we've seen is open rates are actually higher on these communications that we've been sending around coronavirus, around market volatility, around what's happening, help for business owners, etc. Open rates have been, been higher. Um, so keep the communication going out, make it concise and make it relevant. Those are three things that I would say. Thank you. And uh, Gary's come back and said, we also need to remember clients are not just concerned about investments, the health, well-being of loved ones. Absolutely. And dealing with lockdown, lack of loo roll, etc. Um, I'm also seeing loads of suggestions for various social activities that we can be doing online as well. I think um, we've had a Kaylee suggested and a karaoke. So there we go. I'm not sure at 8.30 in the morning is the right slot for that. But there are lots of, um, of other people doing great things um, around and about uh, social media and also in um, uh, on zoom and there's uh, i've noticed some evening beer sessions and all sorts of stuff going on so we'll look to highlight some of those in the shows as we uh, as we move forward um phil uh, for everybody that's going to be on these uh, longer interview slots with us um i've got one last question for you and um you've probably got the easiest or maybe the hardest job of answering it because you're not going to be feeling it quite so much right now but everybody who comes on in these slots is going to be asked what are you looking forward to doing the most once the restrictions have been lifted. Now I'm expecting two or three months from now, it'll be eating an egg or something like that. We'll be, we'll be craving those tiny things. But um, right now, what are you most looking forward to once the restrictions have been lifted? Uh, this is easy. Um, watching my son play sport. Um, so his ice hockey season has just closed down um, and the cricket season is about to, about to start or was about to start. And I love watching him play ice hockey plays at a decent level and plays cricket at a decent level so i love watching that um, and i can't wait to get back to watching him play play those things excellent stuff great thank you phil so um that's the the show for today everybody thank you so much for joining us um we've had up to 56 people on at any one point today i know one or two people have um, dipped off now probably to get ready for joe wicks and we are very mindful that joe wicks is coming and uh, will be a very important feature of um, many people's lives during the lockdown period. Um, so thank you for joining us today. What we've got coming up over the next couple of days, um, of course, we've got the, the very first fitness session with Steve Martin, who's been giving us a, a preview already throughout this session. So really looking forward to that with Steve. Um, I'm not sure whether or not he's gonna get us uh, jumping up and down in our chairs or whether it's gonna be a, um, a descriptive thoughtful piece, but we'll find out tomorrow. Um, on Monday, we've got a tech session in that um, last 10 minute slot um, so we've got there and of course tomorrow our main guest is Chris Bord who will also be doing thought for the day thank you for everybody and your contributions there's been loads going on in the chat hundreds of uh, comments along the way so really appreciate that and uh, see everybody here at 8 30 tomorrow